Uh, hello, um, welcome to uh, the seventh of the SOC Triathlon sponsored by Brisbane Brith Holiday Park. Um, held in a beautiful part of the world in Abbasak. It's a fantastic course, tough in places, but it's very rewarding. Um, Kirsty and uh, I, so Rebecca, are here from Total Tri Training to give you a race brief. Um, please listen very carefully. There'll be some safety stuff and some general pointers for you of what you need to know. Um, it's all important to help ensure you have a safe and an enjoyable race. You hopefully um, should have all the race packs through. Uh, do make sure you study those as well. Um, they've got course maps um, for you so you know what to do on race day. I'm just going to hand you over to Kirsty now for a brief on the COVID protocols for the day. Hi guys, so we all appreciate that racing has had a successful return, but we do have to consider that there are some things that are slightly different now with COVID regulations. Um, so it is important that you take a lateral flow test within 48 hours prior to the race and that you can show um, a negative reading at registration. Uh, obviously that needs to be done through the NHS uh, app so that you've got confirmation of that negative test. If you can't get access to a test, then there will be tests available when you get to registration. Um, but obviously we are um, promoting the idea that you get that done before so there aren't any delays. Uh, again, if you're feeling unwell, please do let somebody know and do not turn up. We are also suggesting that you wear face masks in and around the area. Uh, there will be things like temperature checks being carried out when you arrive uh, just to ensure the safety of all the marshals, all the competitors and to make sure we have a, a safe race. Uh, likewise, there'll be hand sanitizer placed around um, and we will be trying to maintain social distancing where we can. Uh, I'm just going to hand back to Bex now uh, to consider the start and registration. Registration is open between five and nine at the Vainal on Friday for two hours and also um, two hours prior to each race at the beach, which is at the bottom of Long Off near the Beach Cafe. If you go to the Vainal on Friday night to register, no one will tell if you have a little tipple while you're there. Um, to register, you will need your passport or driving license, uh, your race confirmation email or the credit card you paid at your entry with. Also, um, if you, um, unless you're an affiliated member of the BTF, you need to purchase a license, so make sure you've got £6 cash with you. Um, if you have, are a BTF member, then you just need to show your license uh, on the day, so um, you can get up on your phone to show it. If you can't attend registration yourself, um, then it is important. Somebody can collect the um, race information for you. Um, you can nominate someone. Um, your nominee needs to provide a letter written and signed by you, giving you permission to collect everything. Um, and they do need a copy of your online order as well. Um, make sure you've given your nominee a letter signed by you telling that you give them permission to collect all of your stuff. Um, start times, just to remind you, in case you've forgotten, the Olympic race starts at 8 a.m. The sprint race is at 2.33 p.m. So it's a nice lie-in for those doing the sprints. Um, make sure you are ready to race 15 minutes before because nobody likes a last minute faff. Um, there's loads of details on where to park in your race pack. So make sure you have a good look so you know where you're going and that's one less stress to sort out in the morning. Make sure you know where you're going to park. And your transition times, the Olympic distance transition opens at half six uh, um, and it closes at 12.30. And the sprint distance transition opens at 1pm and will close at 6pm. Um, couple of other points, if you're going to pull out of the race at any point, either during the race or before the start, make sure that you let uh, race control know so that they know. Uh, and if at any point in the day you do see someone in trouble that needs help, then make sure you tell a marshal uh, so they can get them help. Um, and then I'm going to hand over to Kirsty, who's going to tell you what you need to do with all the kits you get when you register. 
Okay, so when you turn up at registration and you collect your race pack, there's going to be a few uh, items in there. I'm going to go through absolutely everything uh, because we will have some first timers here on the day. So most important item is going to be your timing chip, which has to be attached to the strap and your left ankle. Uh, that's going to have to be on your left ankle before you go into transition area. It will be checked uh, and you don't take that off again until you've crossed that finish line. Uh, it is just important to mention that um, if you lose that timing chip, there is a £50 charge. They are not cheap. Uh, so that comes from the timing company um, and that will then um, that cost will be passed on to you. So make sure you you look after that timing chip. Uh, what else is in your race pack? So lots of stickers. You will have a sticker that needs to go on to your bike helmet. And we are asking that that goes on to the front of your helmet, please. Uh, there will also be uh, that nice bike sticker that goes onto the seat post. So that's a, a seat post flag type sticker. So that needs to be put onto your bike before you rack uh, your bike into transition. And you'll also get uh, two race tattoo numbers, which we're asking please to go on to arms, not onto legs. So they go on to, so one onto each arm. Uh, and then also you'll get your race uh, number. So that will be a bib number, which the best thing to do with that is to attach to a race belt if you can. That then obviously allows you to wear your race number on your back when you're on the bike and then on your front when you are on the run, uh, but also uh, without pinning that on previously uh, allows for typical British weather that if you need to do a full change of kit, um, so putting on a jacket, etc., then your race belt can just go uh, over the top. Uh, and the last thing that you will have will be your swim cap. Uh, really, really important that you do wear that for the swim uh, because it is essential for the, the swim safety team to make sure that they can clearly see uh, all of the competitors in the water. So that's everything that you will get in your race kit. Over to you, Bex. Okay, we're going to move on to the swim next, which I think, um, Christy, you're going to give a quick brief on. On the swim oh, sorry, I was waiting for transition times. Yeah, I can go. Um, so swim is, I'm going to read this directly from uh, the same race brief that you will have in front of you. Um, it sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. And what I recommend is that you do take five minutes to just have a look at the images of the swim course, where the boys are situated. There's a slightly different course for the sprint uh, and the Olympic. Um, but I'm going to read this word for word so that we can make sure we get this uh, super clear. So the swim has a mass start from the start line on the beach and that will run parallel with the sea for a short distance uh, before turning left down the beach and entering into the sea. Uh, so once you're in the sea and your swim start has start started, you will head out to the first two large yellow buoys. Uh, and they will be branded up with the Abasoc Triathlon logo on them. So it'll be nice and clear. Uh, you're gonna swim around the left buoy first and then uh, around the right buoy back to the beach. So a bit of an Aussie exit, Aussie style exit. Uh, you're gonna run around the marker that's positioned on the beach. And then you're gonna go back into the water. Uh, this time heading to the buoy that's at your far right. And you're going to swim around that boy so that the boy is on the right side, or so you're on the right side. And then you're swimming along um, the sea parallel to the beach. So fairly straightforward so far. And then the differences between uh, the sprint and the Olympic. So if you're in the sprint, um, from here, you're going to uh, swim along parallel to the beach until you are level with the middle slip ramp. And then you turn left and head straight into the beach. That is your swim complete. If you are swimming the Olympic, uh, you're going to carry on straight past that middle slip ramp, straight across two further yellow buoys uh, till you are near the yacht club. Then you're going to head around the outside of uh, the buoy there by the yacht club. Uh, then there's another buoy that you turn back round towards the beach. Um, so that you then swim back parallel with the beach uh, the way that you've just come from until you get back to that middle slip ramp 
uh, where, the, where the sprint swimmers will have exited. Uh, it's just worth bearing in mind, although, as I said, this sounds super complicated, it's really not. There will be a lead kayak out there. There'll be lots of safety crew. There'll also be paddle boarders out there to guide the rest of the field. Um, so just familiarise yourself with the map. Have a look where the boys are so you can see where the Aussie exit is and the bit that runs parallel with the beach. Um, but shouldn't be too complicated once you can see that map in front of you. Um, other notes to, to be aware of for the swim it is um, a wetsuit swim that is compulsory. We see it's a, a sea swim, so we do need to make sure torso is covered with a wetsuit. And as I said, with your race pack, you do need to make sure that you wear your swim hat at all times. Uh, you're allowed to dive. That's absolutely fine if you're confident to do so. Um, and then the only other thing is if you do um, come into any difficulty whilst you're on that swim, um, same protocol as with most races, you're going to turn yourself onto your back, raise your arm into the air and just have a, a clenched fist uh, so that one of the safety crew can see that you're in need of assistance and they will come straight to you. If you're, if you're swimming and you can hear some short, sharp whistle blasts from the safety crew, that is just a signal to say that they are making their way to somebody who needs some assistance. So please just be aware of that. Um, they won't uh, deliberately try and get into your way, um, but make way for them so that they can get to the person that needs assistance as, as quickly as possible. Uh, and then obviously if you do pull out of the swim and that is you, make sure you just return back to race control, uh, so to HQ and let them know that you have um, withdrawn from the swim section. Okay. Thanks Kirsty. I think uh, just to note on the swim as well, uh, weather's been beautiful, it's going to be tropical water temperature for October, so you're super lucky. Uh, Weather is going to be amazing, uh, so it's going to be pan flat, I know for sure. Uh, don't panic, um, stay calm. If you're not a confident swimmer, don't run off with everybody else at the front. Let all the mad men and women go and stay at the back, out the way, get in, acclimatise and have a nice start to your swim, um, nice and relaxed. Don't panic, stay calm. When you get out the swim, remember, you don't know where the photographer is, so get your biggest smile ready, so your photo's good. That's all that matters. And on into transition, to state the obvious, it's a sea swim. You may or may not have had a couple of accidental mouthwashes with salt water, so I would recommend maybe having a, a little drink of water ready to swill your mouth out just to get the salt out. Make sure you've still got your timing chip on and it's nice and safe because we don't want to lose it because uh, you will have pay 50 pounds if that gets lost and it should be on your left ankle um, there are some um sunken metal matting and some small stones when you're going to transition so be careful if you're in a relay team your helmet must stay on the bike until the timing tag has been put on the cyclist's left ankle and that is super super important you will get a penalty if you do not do that do not touch your bike until you have helmets on and you've swapped your um, timing chips. If you're not in a relay, same point applies. Do not put your bike until you have your helmet on. Um, and that's for all competitors and you need to make sure your helmet's fastened as well before you touch your bike. Um, no nudity transition. Hopefully the weather will be warm, but not that warm. Uh, so please stay covered. Um, and please do not ride your bike in transition. So you need to make sure that you get to the mount line before you try and mount your bike. Uh, and that's really important. It will be really clearly marked where the mount line is. Uh, and if you're not sure, check before you get on your bike. There'll be loads of people there to ask. Um, this is a brilliant course. Um, my advice would be have a think about whether you're going to do the flying squirrel. Um, when you're coming out of T1, or are you going to put your bike shoes on in transition um, and then just clip straight in? There is a hill pretty much straight out of T1. You haven't really got much time to get your bike shoes on. So I would suggest, unless you're super confident and super quick, you put your bike shoes on in transition and then clip in at the mount line. Um, on that same note, make sure you are in an easy gear to go uphill. Um, you literally go straight uphill out of transition. So onto the bike. 
that you're all ready, you've had a think, you've checked the weather, hopefully it's going to be boiling hot and you've got your sun cream on, but if it's a little bit of rain forecast, have a think about whether you're going to put a jacket on or not, bye bye. And there's a short, sharp hill, as I said, out of transition, be in the right gear. Um, you are responsible for your own safety on the bike. There are some closed roads, but some of the roads are not closed either. So you need to be aware of vehicles and you need to abide by the highway code. Be safe. In the so don't take any risks and be safe. Um, if you get stuck behind traffic, it will normally only cost you three seconds. Take the opportunity to have a little sip of your drink and then get down and start racing when the car's gone not to take any unnecessary risks and um, keep an eye out for potholes uh, there are some on the course uh, as many as possible have been marked with red, red paint um, but please watch out for any others the bike course is really easy it's all marked with bright yellow arrows and um, so just follow the directions there's loads of marshals on the course they will point that out for you remember if you are doing the sprint it is one lap if you're doing the olympic it is two laps it is your responsibility to know what lap you are on if you're doing the Olympic. And um, the marshals won't know whether you're on lap or one, one or lap two. So you will need to know whether you're going to go round for another lap or go into um, transition. Uh, so there is a super exciting mid bike course competition where there's a three kilometer hill climb called the King of Minto. And um, there is either a million pound prize or a crate of beer, depending on who you believe, uh, for the fastest man or the fastest woman, um, and the fastest woman, sorry, I should say, King of Minto. So have a think about whether you're going to go for that prize before you start. Um, that's a good challenge in the middle of a race. Uh, racing and drafting is forbidden, so please do not do it. There will be motorcyclists out on the course to check that none of you are sneakily cheating. Make sure once you're coming in off the bike course, you dismount your bike for the dismount line. Um, again, it'll be clearly marked and there'll be marshals on there for you. Once you are in transition, make sure you put your bike on the rack before you take your helmet off. If you take your helmet off before your bike is on the rack, then you will get a 20 second penalty and that is non-negotiable and will apply to anybody taking that rule. It is really important. Um, and that's it for the bike, really pretty straightforward. And over to Kirsty for the run. Okay, so bikes back in to transition. If you are a relay runner, make sure you have got that all important timing chip attached to your left ankle before you go over the timing mat. Other than that, the run, this is the fun bit. Uh, we do just need to make sure that, again, you are responsible for your own safety. Um, as Beck said, um, there are um, a few closed road sections, but the majority of it is not. So you need to use your eyes and ears and be aware um, that there are other road users out and about. Uh, therefore, the race is not allowing headphones. So you must not wear um, any form of uh, music device. Um, and you need to make sure that you just uh, keep your wits about you. Uh, so what to tell you about the course itself. When you leave transition, you're going to head straight down a sip ramp uh, to the beach and you're going to head out right. Again, super easy to navigate. There will be yellow direction signs um, directing you where to go. There will also be marshals out to direct you. Uh, hills, there are a couple of small steep hills, um, nothing, nothing crazy steep, they are all absolutely runnable, um, so just be aware that they are coming, but uh, absolutely you can get up them. Um, and there are um, a few little steep bits going over the groins as you come back towards the finish, uh, so just be aware that you are going to finish uh, coming back onto the sand. Uh, but, and uh, Bex has done this race herself, when you come over that last groin, although it will uh, sap the legs of energy, she says the end is in sight. So uh, yeah, don't despair. Um, just make sure you've got that smile ready for the camera and you're not pressing stop on your watch. <laughs> uh, so I think Bex is just going to finish off with a couple more notices. But other than that, um, from me, have fun, uh, race hard, enjoy. Yeah, and most importantly, enjoy the race, have fun. Make sure you smile because it is a scientific fact. It does make you go faster. So, and you never know where a photographer's uh, stood. Um, 
for those that are uh, gunning for prizes, it is very important that you go to the prize giving, otherwise you will not receive your prize. Um, it is at 12 noon at the finish gantry for the Olympic distance and half five for the sprint distance prize giving. So make sure you attend. Um, you know, good luck if you win the beer for the, uh, the mini hill climb mid race. Um, and yeah, that's all from Kirsty and I. Good luck. Um, and yeah, any anyone needs any advice, then uh, you know, get into the Thank you. Thank you.